Thanks so much for coming, everyone. Um, and thank you, well, I, I should say all my thanks, but I want to thank the artists in the show, um, a really exciting group uh, from near and far uh, to Frank for inviting me to do this project with you and to Quinling for being here for the talk and who's coming all the way from San Francisco. Um, and also to the students who helped make this possible for installing the show. Um, uh, to Arlen, faculty in the, I don't know if he's here, in the digital media department for helping make um, some of Beatrice's work possible in printing. And of course to Victoria, uh, gallery director for pulling all of this together. Um, and I, we can jump into the conversation. I know we're kind of in, uh, keeping track of time here, and then we'll leave room for maybe 10 minutes of uh, questions and answers, if that sounds good. But as Victoria mentioned, this show started as a conversation between Frank and I. Frank, who used to run the uh, new, new media, digital media program here at RIC, um, and we were bouncing around so many kind of different ideas before this um, around kind of uh, Sinophone studies, the scholar Yukui, um, ideas around techno-diversity and cosmotechnics, um, digital nomads, um, embodiment, the body, uh, materiality in relationship to this idea of technology, um, uh, which is a big question, but also the genre of new media and art, which um, is a very particular one, but the show really investigates kind of the uh, specific geopolitical, um, but also kind of material approaches to um, this medium of new media. So I wanted to maybe start with you, Frank, and kind of talk about your work in this show, which I, I drew a lot from to kind of curate some of the works around it. Um, it's entitled Ava Topology, and there's also this book that you produced in residence at Asia Art Archive very recently. Um, and maybe we could talk about kind of the process and how you worked through this online platform of Fiverr. Fiverr, yeah. And um, which is a digital marketplace. Um, how you kind of worked with the vendors online to create this installation. Um, but also like we can discuss maybe about your kind of approach to um, these larger topics of digital platforms and you balancing that with your, the specificity of your own subjectivity um, mm -hmm. might be a good place to start. So do you wanna tell us a little bit about the process of this work? Because it's so process oriented. Yeah, I'll tell you a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Right, so as Victoria said, and Danny said, you know, I actually worked here for nine years uh, running the digital media curriculum, you know, and um, uh, the last couple of years, obviously, we were all teaching online, right? Using technology via Zoom, all the classes were conducted online as well as our life. Uh, so I think, you know, the whole show, when we were conceiving the ideas of this whole show, Sinophone Studies was definitely one of, one of them, and also the hidden message is also how do we, you know, work with technology nowadays? How do we try to make sense of this new world we are living in? Um, so at that time, I also had a different project which required me to work with a lot of digital creators um, on online marketplaces such as Fiverr. Uh, to hire them for services, you know, then during that process I got to actually meet a lot of very interesting digital creators from the, you know, places I would never imagine, you know, um, such as, uh, some, such as people from Sri Lanka, from Nigeria, from uh, um, Indonesia, from Mexico, from uh, Estonia, so a lot of them are actually global south countries, you know. So that, that was the point I started thinking about how do we actually talk about our identities or maybe a possible, you know, a possibility of disidentification, you know, uh, through technology and try to form a new kind of network or maybe try to form new kind of interobjectivity, you know, basically a new, a new imagination of new kinds of relationship, you know, um, digitally, right, it's, as it's a digitally driven project. So the process was uh, I started working with them, you know, I send them a very blurry photo of myself, that's the only thing I give them, and uh, I ask them to uh, send me back a digital avatar, 
you know, ask them to make use their imagination to give me whatever they create, you know, in 3D, uh, 3D modeling format. Um, the game rule I made was I, every, every, every service, quote unquote, is going to be paid fairly. Uh, and also, I will never say no to their delivery. So I just work with what I get. And uh, you can see the result here. Uh, all these objects on the wall, uh, they are conversation accompanied right through this whole process. You know, these digital creators um, from these countries actually told me so many interesting stories based on their locality, their identity, you know, their beliefs maybe. Um, and um, yeah, so a lot of these objects, uh, souvenir maybe are evidence of that, uh, these conversations. Um, and uh, a lot of these conversations are documented in the zine I made. Uh, I actually wrote a short story for each of them. So yeah, you can also see that in the books. Uh, just to follow up a little bit is that, were there any particular, um, you talked about like some interesting conversations you had about, for example, landscapes or like, mm -hmm like the literal landscape in which a person was coming from or the geography they were coming from and how it's interesting how they kind of your authorship gets obliterated in this project mm -hmm. um, and then these kind of other voices come through and you're including them in the project. Yeah, totally. I mean, uh, like the landscape, That's there's one of the example, this face on the bottom, that's a guy from Sri Lanka actually. He was telling me about this amazing place called the Sigiriya uh, in Sri Lanka. Uh, they call it the Lion Mountain. Uh, so, you know, that's like a physical location, right? Uh, you can find the GPS coordinates of it. But then I looked it up online, you know, and it was astonishing enough. So, in the, you know, at that point, I just realized that this conversation, conversation involving this ge geographical location become the space, you know, which we actually situated in uh, and uh, start, you know, uh, inventing some weird collaboration. So, so, so yeah, so another thing you mentioned is how do I remove myself from this intimidating position of the original creator? You know, uh, as artists, we are all used to make our things and you know, uh, you have this license, right? Creative license of the thing. But uh, for me, the challenge is actually to remove myself from that position, you know, uh, and to get, uh, get all of them involved as much as possible, you know. So basically, these creators made my stories. I didn't come up with any stories, you know. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and I think that's such a, like, really interesting, your work offered such an interesting lens for me to think about this idea of techno diversity mm -hmm. in um, the show, which is also drawing from a lot of the critical scholarship that's evolving around um, conversations of what this uh, idea that seems so all consuming these days means. And it might almost sound a little bit obvious now that I say it because there's been so much uh, recent thought around technology. There's a text on algorithms um, and kind of how the algorithm was something that was has been around since the beginning of human civilization. It's just a way of kind of um, the building blocks coming together in a certain type of formula and that's also a very material thing uh, mm. rather than having us believe from big tech, for example, that we are all uh, kind of spiraling towards this singularity of technology that's like a neutral idea that's not informed by politics or the body um, that's all in a virtual sphere. So I kind of wanted to expand a lot more on these ideas of even the digital in the show as well. And I just want to point out this work that we're standing in front of by LOLOL and they're a collective based in Taipei. So sadly they're not here with us, but they're really um, exciting um, collective that's also based a lot uh, their practice around martial arts practice um, and kind of bringing that um, as a practice to understand our bodies in a time of um, technological control but also like intimacy so they're referencing a lot of these like everyday machines or electronics that we live with and um, pairing that with bodily movements in Tai Chi and they bring their uh, workshops to office spaces, to parks, um, to different like organizations and centers. Um, and this, this is another work by them that includes a kind of VR meditation area. Um, and they use a lot of interesting um, kind of multimedia approaches that includes scripture, uh, meditation, martial arts um, in conjunction with video and VR. Maybe 
I can come to you now, Quinling, <laughs> which is your work here, which I was so excited to present, which is um, 2092 Tale of Moon Trip. And so this is occurring in a not so distant future, right? Um, yeah. And you're drawing from actual moonscapes that you found in Google Moon. Um, there's this kind of science fictional travelogue that's going on in this work and uh, it was a very collaborative project you worked with sound designers composers translators narrators animators um, you drew the illustrations and um, also a choreographer to do the aerial dance um, so I would like to, maybe we can talk a little bit about in terms of like subjectivity and relationship to kind of digital media practices is um, this work is also specifically addressing, it's kind of a metaphor for the experience of Chinese immigrants throughout history, correct? Yeah, sure. And maybe if you want to talk about that in your work, which is having worked directly with these like larger tech platforms and being involved in the scene in Silicon Valley. In the okay. Bay Area. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, hi, I'm uh, living in the San Francisco Bay Area. So, it's a very intense city, and the Chinese community is in the Bay Area is very diversity. You know, some people uh, immigrated for like 100 years from Qing Dynasty, Qing Dynasty, and others just moved just recent 20 or 30 years. So, it's very different. So, this work is being rep uh, commissioned by the Taiwan for the biennials. Uh, when this show happened, uh, you know, the, the big international news, the Russia and the Ukraine the war happened in that time, in 2021. So the work is, uh, I'm uh, living with the uh, communities in the, it's not in San Francisco and Silicon Valley, it's in between a city called Millbury. There are a lot of the Taiwanese to live in, in this uh, small city. They, they both, uh, you know, their identity is, uh, you know, is a uh, fluxy. Some of the old generations, they think I'm uh, also the Chinese because the, my, I is, is, escaped the, the man in China because of the Chinese Civil War. But the younger generation think I'm Taiwanese, I'm Taiwanese American. So the work is, uh, I'm a researcher about the history of the uh, modern history in the, the, the China. You know, in the communism, they abandoned the, the, any of the modern art after 1949. So they have a really strong traditional called the socialist realistic. Uh, so if you look at my works, the, a lot of work is very abstract, but it's not like a Western uh, modern art history, like the abstract expressionism or minimalism. It's come from our the, uh, Chinese the native, the local modern movement in the 1930s. We, the Chinese the first generation modern artists, uh, want, we want to use our, think about how to combine with the, the European the modernism with the Chinese character character and the Chinese the poem tradition. So the, the language of the art is uh, really deep looted by the Chinese the tradition of the modernists. But uh, I, we cannot find this tradition in the mainland China. So we only find this tradition in the Taiwan and outside of the mainland China. So the in the city of the Milbury in the San Francisco Bay Area, this immigration they escaped the mainland China because of a political issue, and then they go to Taiwan, then they get the, like, the degree, like a fine art degree in the United States. So they keep going to pursue the Chinese the modern, modernist in the United States, but they never be recognized in the mainstream museum. So the work I think is really important to show, you know, the, the urgent geopolitical issue about the Russia and the Ukraine and the Man in China and Taiwan to push me to make this uh, work to try to show the invisible, the language and art movement in the you know art circle. So the reason why I collaborate with so many people, some designer, the writer, and the dancer, because the you know the modern art in the you know non-Western, a lot of non-Western country. It's not like the, we don't have much the resource and the very mature institution, a museum, like a MoMA or you know, big institution. So a lot of the modern artists, they work together. The writer, poem, musician, painter, they work together, movement, and they don't have the institution to support us. So we have to, we don't have a sync, separate the media. So that's the reason I think the, it's a very unique experience how the Asian modern artists, uh, we, like, like the 
community, like collective, to make a, a model art, individual model art. Uh, yeah, and and Danny said about the the tech in the Silicon Valley because the, this is the, another issue. Uh, after Cold War, uh, end of the Berlin Wall in the 1989, you know, all of the country become the new liberalism. China also, we you know, we abandoned the communism ideologies, and my my generation grew up the, this time. So China economy is growing so fast. So the new immigration. Uh, born and raised in the new liberalism in China, they both live in and work in the Silicon Valley. So they have a lack of communication with all the immigration in the San Francisco and Oakland, in the old Chinatown. So that's the, I'm just interested about how to, the people's, the, which the historic narrative of history you choose to belong to you. I think it's really important you think about your identity, you know. And uh, even they both the uh, citizen in the American, they have a Chinese heritage, but uh, they don't share the history. Like the, I live in the San Francisco Chinatown, uh, they do a lot of the daily movement about the teaching about the history of America, the civil rights movement, Martin Luther King, and uh, you know, Asian American history. But in the south of the, like San Jose and the Silicon Valley, is the, nobody talking about the, you know, educated this, this the history. People are very competitive, so want to have a good education and uh, go to the Eva school, you know, Eva school. And uh, they have a more privilege to travel back and forth in the China and uh, and the uh, United States. The good, very good case is Aileen Gu. You know, have you ever heard, heard about that? Gu. It's an uh, Olympic champion skin. Nobody knows Aileen Gu? That's you gotta look her up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. <It's> okay. <laughs> So uh, let's. Uh, I think about the uh, you know the economic segregation of the the local and the global local, local, localization and globalization. I think it's it's a universe issue, not just about the Chinese the, the community in the United States. So yeah, all of my work just deep thinking about the different communities. The the narrative of the communities the, with the history. Thank you so much. Okay. That's great. I, it kind of leads me to thinking about, because Frank, you and I kind of talked about how all the artists in this show are Asian, Asian diaspora artists, um, but I didn't name that specifically in the exhibition text because I thought, in, in a way, I talked to Tiffany Xia, who did these books over here about that, and it's almost more I don't want to say subversive, but in a way it's kind of like a refusal of the identity mm. politics approach in that these artists all have their particular approaches, identities, kind of cultural, socio-political, geopolitical affiliations, and that all comes through in their works and it's kind of explained through the works themselves. Um, Tiff and a lot of things are actually in a way this idea of like the medium is the message is that things are like disguised in different formats and mediums through this work um, or working through various platforms. Tiffany's there's one um, book here that is um, am I allowed to say this but it's like a pornography magazine that disguises polit political language about Hong Kong and the situation in Hong Kong and the protest there. And she made that at the height of kind of COVID, um, but also um, thinking about the protests and being a person of the Hong Kong diaspora and um, thinking and being part of the protests, but also like being far away geographically sometimes and so her books are kind of they operate in this series and then the third one which is a collaboration with Yuri Pattison is um, a book on um, thinking about the history of timekeeping technology so there's also various types of like technological um, topics happening Beatrice also thinking about um, war technology, drones, fortresses, um, through not only now, but throughout history, and how like the fortress was a kind of technology and um, a military one, but also relating those in almost algorithmic way and um, 
kind of image relational way to the plants, um, the various flora and fauna and natural objects that take the same, like this kind of, um, the same form as the fortress, but a lot of these plants, for example, they thrive around these areas that have um, been succumbed to uh, historical human trauma. Um, so yeah, um, that's just a glimpse of all the works here. Did you both want to say anything else in relation to this show or your works? Funding first. <laughs> Because uh. <laughs> <laughs> you're both working on so many other things, I yeah. don't know if you want to share about current projects. Or uh, my current project is, uh, I mean, I, I, I get a you know, commission work in the called the Facebook Meta. They invite a lot of the artists living in the San Francisco and Oakland to make a public art project in the tech company, office tech company. Because the, that's the specific situation in California we call the gentrification. Because the tech company is very strong and uh, they invest a lot of the you know, real estate in the city. So the old uh, community like the Chinatown, the Mission, the, the Latino community in the Mission Street, they do a lot of the protests to resist the gentrification. So they are against the tech company, big tech company in the Meta and Google and so many things. And uh, so that's the reason why the, many of the tech companies, they, they try to you know, invite the artists uh, to the, make the project, give me some budget to make the art. But I think the, they can, not to solve this issue because, the, for example, like the, the chat GPT with some popular AI, they headquarters just located in the Mission District. It's a, the Latinos community in the San Francisco. And uh, my recent project is try to think about the future of the social networking. It's not a, like the neoliberalism ideology or California ideology. I'm thinking about the, go back to the sixth century, like counterculture. When the counterculture and the Black Panther Party, a lot of the diversity political political ideology, like the new like left wing American left wing history, uh, how they thinking about the, the the community and the social network. So I recently work a people's the, a group of people they are Buddhism, but they both the white people. They define their identity as a converted Buddhist because they think they have a really deep the root with the hippies tradition and counterculture. This group of people live in the uh, state called uh, the border. The city is the, in the coast of Denver. In the, the, and they keep the their lifestyle, the commute, commute lifestyle. And uh, yeah, they live in the village and uh, they, they are both like uh, uh, environmental activism. The one of the people the, he names the Brian Allen Bruce, he self immolate in himself in the spring court in the, the last year, the Earth Day. So I work with this community and make a project talking about the why this guy do the self immolate to against the environment issues uh, because of the like the you know, segregate and the binary opposition of the globalization and localization in the pandemic. Yeah, that's a reason work with that. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm good. I mean, you know, I can I can respond a little bit to the question. Uh, you talk about this Asian identity. You know, is this like an Asian American art show? You know, one of these shows. Is this like a show specifically about Asian uh, diaspora? You know, I mean, I've been working. Uh, I was born in Shanghai, right? Uh, I came here uh, for uh, graduate school uh, and somehow just stayed. Um, so I've been working on this topic, you know, such as like some of my, the, the topics I, uh, I'm very interested in is nomadism, you know, nomadic subjectivities, the idea of in-betweenness, you know, uh, it's not about either or, maybe you are neither nor or both, you know. Uh, I'm also interested in the idea of disidentification, you know, how can we actually bypass uh, all the identi identity paradigms and, you know, start generating new imaginations from that. Uh, such as this project, you know, how can we actually bypass the conventional way of normality, you know, the, the, the exploitation from these uh, online marketplaces and uh, try to do uh, wicked things, you know, uh, with each other and try to start building this, like, you know, actor network. 
Um, so actually collaboration is quite important for me and I really enjoy how during this process we're gonna approach it with like an openness, you know. Uh, I think this, this exhibition, the way we are looking at it now is, you know, it's pretty different from our very first idea when we start talking about it, right? So yeah, so it's, um, and I really embrace that, I think. You know, I love that uh, sort of like a constant becoming. You know, you never know what's gonna happen in the next moment and yeah. yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. I think that's a great place to end on things. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.